Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith and today I'm going to revisit an old favourite. I'm going to show you how to make Staffordshire oat cakes. So I first did this about four years ago and uh, I will admit I did it wrong. My oat cakes were about a centimetre thick <laughs> and they should be, oh you know, two or three millimetres or less if you can manage. So we'll aim for that today. And I got a lot of negative feedback, mainly from people who live in and around the Potteries. Now, in case you don't know, the Potteries is a region of North Staffordshire in England that's famous for making pottery mainly you know tableware and other things uh, so the Potteries is a polycentric city it includes Tunstall, Burslem, Hanley, Stoke, Fenton, Longton I didn't read that off a list I memorized it and notable names based there include Royal Dalton, Wedgwood, Spogue and many many others uh, too many to list. Unfortunately when I made my last video I completely forgot about all that and what came to my mind was toilets because the only time I've actually been, well I've never been to Stoke, I've been through it on a train and um, you know we passed the back of a factory that had lots of baths and sinks and toilets stacked outside ready to go all over the world. Um, so I got into a lot of trouble for that as well. So no offence meant, you sensitive Stokies. But this might upset you because I was in Derbyshire over the weekend and the butcher in the village we stayed at had Derbyshire filled oat cakes. Get a load of that. And they are exactly the same as Staffordshire oat cakes. So there you go. Also historically in Yorkshire and Lancashire there used to be a thing called have a cake or have a bread which again seems very similar to these Staffordshire oat cake but I've never had one so I don't know. Anyway if you enjoy this video give it a like, share, subscribe etc and without further ado let's make oat cakes. Ingredients for your oat cakes I've got 450 ml of half and half milk and water I've got 125 grams of oats, 100 grams of flour, more about that later, half a teaspoon of salt and about a teaspoon of active dried yeast. So this is bread flour, it's half whole grain and half white. And the oats, these are just regular porridge oats, but they're, they're a little bit big so I'm going to whiz them in the blender to try and make them smaller. If you can get oatmeal, that's, uh, that's perfect. Um, or you know maybe pinhead oats. The idea is your oats need to be small not big and chunky. So first thing to do is whiz the porridge oats in a blender to make them finer. Don't forget to put the lid on. Pull. So that looks a bit more like oatmeal. <laughs> now we need to mix all the dry ingredients together and then add the milk and water but that needs to be hot. It needs to be blood temperature which is 37 degrees Celsius. So I'll pop it in the microwave for about a minute and mix the flour in and half a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of yeast. Now I've seen a lot of recipes that use fresh yeast and that might be better but you have to make that into a starter before you actually use it in, in the batter. So uh, I've tried that before and it, never, and it never works for me but we'll see. Uh, that's about 40 but I think it'll be fine. So just mixy mixy and make a well in the centre and pour in some of the liquid, or well about half, mix that in and then mix the rest in. And you should end up with a batter 
the consistency of double cream, heavy cream. Now I'll just pop the last dribble in. That looks about right. Now we need to cover it and leave it somewhere warm for at least an hour, possibly two, possibly longer, until it's nice and frothy or bubbly. So, you know I've banned cling film in this house, so now I've got these beeswax uh, cloth things, wraps, and they're reusable. So you just uh, press it down and the heat from your hands melts the wax a bit or softens it and it sticks to itself. So it's magical and ecological and I'm saving the planet. Yay! Right. Back in an hour or two. Okay, so it's the next day. Um, it wasn't rising, or it wasn't bubbling as much as I wanted it to, or at all. Uh, so I left it overnight and it has bubbled somewhat. And it smells a bit sour, which I guess is a good thing for a fermented product. So let's have a go at making oat cakes. Now traditionally your oat cakes will be cooked on something like a bake stone or a griddle but if you don't have those things you can you know, just as well use a frying pan. I'm using my cast iron griddle plate so I'm heating the plate on kind of medium-ish and I've just got a little blob of dripping, beef dripping. You can use lard or oil or maybe butter I suppose. So when your fat is hot just ladle some of the mixture and spread it out into a disc. You're aiming for something that's 20 centimeters across, 8 inches, but you know, bigger or smaller shouldn't be a problem. What is a problem is the thickness. You want it as thin as you can get it so it'll roll nicely. And when it's set on top, turn it over. I've got the bacon on the griddle as well and I've got the grill or broiler um, heating because we'll finish them off in that well just by melting the cheese. Now this this is more like it. This has got the the holes on the top that we want that are characteristic of uh, Staffordshire oat cakes. So I call that win and I think that is a pretty good oat cake. Yeah they there. Right so we'll just sprinkle cheese across uh, half of it and stick it under the grill to melt. So I'm only doing two for now. We'll have the rest of them when you lot have gone. So there we go, nicely melted cheese. Hot tray. <laughs> I'll just pop some bacon on there as well. Filling's pretty much up to you. Um, you could actually have a full English in one of these if you wanted. <laughs> And roll it up, and they've got a Staffordshire burrito. Sorry, oat okay. cake. And now <laughs> it's taste test time with uh, <laughs> Mrs. <laughs> Keith Cook. <Cooks>. Hello. <laughs> ah. Okay. Oh, breakfast! They look like pancakes. They are a kind of pancake. Oh, oh I, think, I, thought... I think I'm allowed to say that. I thought they were, I, I thought oat cakes were like little round. That's Scottish oat cakes. Ah. They're different. Crikey. Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Is this going to get messy? Mm-hmm. Hi, by the way. They're dripping. Oh. Oh, I like the crispy bacon. Well, I'll tell you what, they're a right pain in the <laughs> but to make. <laughs> but worth it, mm. I think. Are they worth it? Mm. Yeah. They're pancakes, aren't they? But made with oats. Mm. Yeah. They Fried are. porridge. <laughs> mm. Apparently it was um, Indian soldiers during the Raj uh, from that region who... <laughs> came back and they wanted to try and recreate the chapati 
with local ingredients and this is what you get. What, English soldiers who'd been in India who'd come back? Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Mm. I count that as a win. You will not believe what I've been through <laughs> to get to this stage. And I'm not going to tell you. Anyway. What's the key thing for it working? Bubbles. There you go. Your batter has to ferment and get bubbly. If it doesn't, you're stuffed. Because mm. I think the first time you did it, it was quite cold, wasn't it? Yeah. So we actually put the heating on. And the to second get time. On. Oh, really? Yeah, but we put the heating on the second time to make sure. <sighs> yeah, still didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, which one's this then? Is this the third well, batch? Um, no, this is actually the second batch, but left overnight to slowly ferment. Right then. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's very That's nice, it. I tell you. Yeah, it's a different texture from mm. ordinary pancakes. You can tell it's oats rather than. It's than probably flour. healthy. <laughs> that and all. <laughs> anyway. You can write like yours. Um, so, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and see you next time. <laughs>